It was quite the weekend for the Worcester Railers, and there was plenty to smile about as Worcester picked up back-to-back -back wins. We saw teddy bears fly, and the Railers recorded their league-leading sixth shorthanded goal of the season. But the highlight of the weekend was Ian Milos, who made his pro debut in net on Sunday and recorded 31 saves in Worcester's 4-1 win over the Reading Royals. Well, Worcester will host the Allen Americans on Wednesday night for the first ever time in franchise history before heading north of the border for a pair of games with the Brampton Beast before the holiday break. I'm Cam McGuire and this is your Worcester Railers Weekly Report. Veteran forwards Kyle Thomas and Barry Almeida each scored goals on Friday night versus the Maine Mariners, but the Mariners were able to hand Worcester their third straight loss, pulling out a 4-2 victory. With the same two teams in action on Saturday night, it would be a different result. It took just two minutes and 13 seconds for the Teddy Bears to be launched out onto the ice as Shane Walsh scored his first of two goals on the night in the Railers, 3-2 win over Maine. Rookie forward Ross Olsen tallied the other goal for the Railers, while Shane Walsh and Bo Brower collected assists on the score. An altercation midway through the second period between J.D. Dudek and Ryan Farrell led to the Railers' 10th fighting major of the season and the second from rookie defenseman Justin Murray. Ryan Farrell, Farrell's got the jersey over Murray's head. Murray still up on his feet, rips the helmet off Farrell, and Murray drags Farrell down to the ground. And if Farrell is going to go after Dudek, you better watch out if you're wearing a purple sweater. On Sunday afternoon, when Worcester hit the ice to take on the Reading Royals, they looked to make it two wins in a row for just the second time this season, and that they did. Nick Pirog scored the Railers' sixth shorthanded goal of the season in the first period to give Worcester a 1-0 lead. And the tally for Pirog was his third shorthanded mark of the season, which has him tied for the league lead, while Jordan Samuels Thomas collected the primary assist for his league leading fifth shorthanded point of the season. Drew Callen would score his first goal this season, while Nick Pirog and Dante Salaturo each tallied empty net goals in the Railers' 4-1 win over the Royals. The highlight of Sunday afternoon was North Grafton, Massachusetts native Ian Milos, who made his professional debut, making 31 saves. And yes, he stands tall, standing at six foot seven, but he looked even taller in net as he was cool, collective, and very confident between the pipes. With friends and family in attendance, we had a chance to catch up with Ian on Monday to recap his performance. Well, Ian, uh, what a performance that was for you. I'm sure it had to be pretty exciting. Yeah, it was definitely exciting. Uh, like I said last night, it was uh, a long time coming. It's been a little bit, but I'm um, glad to get that first one out of the way. Well, a long time coming, I'd say so. It was your first start in about four years. You didn't look nervous in that at all. Did you have any nerves going into the game? Uh, I'd say the night before and uh, leading up to the game, I was very nervous um, with good reason. But, uh, you know, kind of same thing with my first college start. Once I got to the rink, uh, I was around the boys, you know, we got out there. Um, they all seemed to go away, and uh, it was all pretty natural again. Ian, well, there's a reason why we're sitting right now. Obviously, you're six foot seven. I'm about five seven on a good day. Uh, where do you get your height from? Uh, definitely uh, my mom and dad. Uh, my mom's pretty tall for a girl. She's about five seven, five eight, and uh, my dad's around six five. So uh, definitely contribute that to them. <laughs> Well, a North Grafton Mass native, you had tons of friends, you had tons of family in the stands, and when you got the first star of the game, you went out there, you threw the t-shirt, they were sitting right behind the bench, and you hucked it right over all their heads, but uh, had to be pretty cool to have that many people in the crowd. Yeah, it was awesome to see all of them uh, here to come and support me. You know, my, I'm really close to my family, so uh, for them to be behind me all these years and to uh, still show support, um, you know, it's great. and. Uh, yeah, I tried to hawk the t-shirt into that crowd of like 30 people and I overshot them. So uh, I'm sure they're happy with the win instead of a t-shirt though. Well, you still have the Boston College pads, uh, the Boston College mask, but there's a unique feature on the back. There's a, a peanut M&M and uh, can you tell us about that? I've heard it's kind of an inside joke. Yeah, when I was uh, when I was making my mask my freshman year, my other mask, I have the, the same dude on the back, but um, I didn't really know what I wanted to put back there because it's a pretty personal spot, so uh, me and one of my friends kind of just thought of putting that up, and uh, I'll leave the reason um, 
just for him and I, but uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, just been a thing that's come with me since BC. Before the Railers head north once again for a pair of games with the Brampton Beast, join us on Wednesday night as Worcester plays host to the Allen Americans on a 2-3-4 weekday game, and you can also score $5 off any ticket purchased at the box office with your price chopper Market 32 Advantage Edge Card. Can't wait to see all of you at the DCU Center on Wednesday as the Railers take on the Allen Americans. For the Worcester Railers, I'm Cam McGuire.